Welcome back to part four of the plants and trees tutorial. Anything that you make with branches and leaves, pretty much. It's a procedural setup, so you can go really nuts with this. Now, about 90% of you aren't subscribed yet. So please, if you like this content, subscribe, leave a like, a comment. I would appreciate that a lot. And this one, we're going to be working on the textures. We're going to add some more randomization options. And we're going to be working on the procedural variables, right? We're going to be setting that up in the geometry node modifier. So let's dive in. Right, so it's time to actually start adding some leaves, I guess, instead of having it as planes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a leaf texture that I had lying around. Um, so I'm going to go to my leaf there. Shader editor. New home, right? So if you can't find it, then control T. Right, then click open for an image texture or locate the file. Um, that you can download from the description, by the way, if you'd like, or use your own texture in rendered view, you'll be able to see what it looks like. All right, beautiful. Connect the alpha to the alpha, and we are set. We are all set, but we're in EV, which means that if we are in EV, we need to go to the material settings and actually set our shadow mode or blend mode, one or both, to alpha clip, I think it is in the blend mode. There we go. Right, and then you'll be able to see through it. Um, I'm just going to set it to cycles instead, because... I like it. So there we go. Um, I'm going to set the specular a little bit lower. right? I don't want all of those hard, white specular highlights. And the roughness, let's set this to more. There we go. And now in edit mode of that plane, I'm going to uh, add uh, some geometry. Like that and like this. Beautiful. And um, reason why is because I want to have a little bit of, of, um, of a geometry variation it's just not going to be a plane so then i'm just going to go into my edit modes and in the uv editor in the right window i'm going to scale this all down so it fits nicely in that plane something like that mm, it needs to fit fully there we go and then in edit mode i'm just going to select a few corners enable my proportional editing tool with o or at the top set this to sharp gz and move this down a little bit like that this one too like that, make it at least a little bit, um, a little bit random, right? Those endpoints, something like that. Beautiful, we have gravity in there as well. Nice, then I'm gonna hit shift, right mouse, and I'm gonna set my 3D cursor at the stem input there. Right mouse, origin to 3D cursor, there we go. All right, so it's no longer in the right axis, it seems, so in geometry nodes, just set it to be in the right direction at least and then in edit mode right we can see that it's now pointing up it's not really what we want to do in edit mode just press tab a s x minus one and set our 3d cursor to the proper location again there we go that should work now our leaves are pointing down quite nicely let's go into geometry notes i'm gonna just disable my overlay for a sec just crank up the skill i guess of our leaves a little bit as well all right so our skill of our leaves Let's crank this up a little bit. They can be bigger, something like that. And for the rotation, the Z rotation, I want it to be a little bit different, right? I want a bit of a random value there, right? So what I'm going to do is we did the same thing when we created the branches, right? So shift A and we can do rotate Euler. There we go. Axis angle. Tangent is going to be that angle. And uh, well, this angle can be random, right? So drag that out. Random value from a minus pi to pi. There we go. Quite easy, quite nice, I'd say. Right, let's crank the scale down just a little bit, make it more, more random. There we go, quite beautiful. All right, quite decent, I would say. They're pointing down a little bit. Maybe we want a little bit more of a random rotation there as well. And um, so to do that, I guess we could just hit shift A, and rotate instances. There we go. And we can just add a little bit of randomness there. Random value. There we go. From, let's say, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So not a lot of random rotation, but just a little bit to make it seem a little bit more different. There we go. Right, so now in our geometry nodes inputs, right, we already added a count, a random seed, stuff like that. So we can just change our seed. Everything will look slightly different, as you can see. Right. And yeah, that's just how we set up our leaf, right? If we want more, we can just crank up our branches. Um, I would actually like to crank up my sub branches. So 
we are just going to do that. So we have a branch density for our second subset of branches, like that. Or what we could do, even easier perhaps, right now it's only adding leaves to the endpoints, but we could also just disconnect this and set this to be a random value too. And then with a prob probability, we can actually set the amount of positions our leaves are going to be spawning in. Something like that. Not bad at all. That's looking nice. Um, an issue I see when I change the seed a few times is that these bottom uh, those bottom branches should not really be there because they will be going into the ground. So how do we fix that? It is incredibly easy. So what we can do is right in front we do any type of editing here. We can hit Shift A and find um, a trim curve. There we go. And well, make sure to connect it to the proper one. There we go. And then we can just hit the start and just trim that up a little bit. Right. So the starting point is a bit higher. We can even crank down the end point so we end up with a little bit of a spike there. But I like it at one. Something like this, right? So now if I change my, my seat, you can see we get a new plant every time. Looking quite decent, quite nice. And even if we draw new ones, right, it looks very, very beautiful. Okay. So let's see, let's draw a little bit of a larger one. It still works. Yep, still works quite nicely. Okay, so that's looking nice. So let's lastly add a little bit of a material to that stem as well. Okay, so to the shader editor we go. Actually, maybe it cuts off our leaves a bit too early, and which means we can play around with this value of the less than note. Maybe something like this works better. Yeah, that's nice, right? Looking better. All right, so shader editor. I'm going to go to my world settings first. So it changes to an environment texture. Where is it? Environment color, environment texture. There we go. I'm just going to add a quick HDRI. You can download those for free on polyhaven.com or what is it now? Is it polyhaven? I think so. And select one that you like. Then in our render settings, I'm going to go to my film, transparent. There we go. And then for my leaf texture, I'm going to hit Shift A, Edge mm, Shader. There we go. And I'm going to set this to Translucent BSDF and connect the same color there. Right, so we get a little bit of light shining through those leaves. Isn't that beautiful? Shift A and find a hue and saturation, perhaps. There we go. And then for if you want less light to be shining through that, just crank that value down. Zero means no at all. And well, one means light shining through that. I want a little bit, not too much though. Something like that, looking quite decent, right? So for the stem, right? The fun part, we already UV and wrap that, right? So that's quite easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this as leaf. And then for my busier curve, it's gonna be the brand or just a plant, I guess. I'm gonna hit a new shader and name this branch. There we go. And we actually wanna add a new shader, right? A new texture. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit Ctrl T. Right, so I got a little bit of a texture that I'm going to use. You'll be able to download that from the description as well. I'm going to hit open, downloads, and then there's my uh, my little bark texture. Right, um, so it's not really visible yet. So the reason why, very simple. We didn't set the correct material in our geometry node editor. Right, because we have, of course, got our branches. This is where we add our, our leaves. Right, so for these three... We want to add a specific material, right? So hit Shift A, Join Geometry there, and then this one, and right mouse and Shift together, hold Shift, right mouse, will get a new little ball from which you will be able to drag a line, right? Connect that up there, disconnect it here, and then we can just hit Shift A, Set Material right there, and set it to be our branch, right? So let's zoom in a little bit, see what happens. Nothing beautiful happening yet. I'm going to disconnect my leaves for a sec. In the shader editor, why is this all black? Why is it not working properly? Simple reason. We are not using our stored UV map. We are using the usual UV map. So just delete that. Shift A, find an attribute. And we can now just fill in our own attribute name, our store UV. There we go. And connect that vector up there. And right away, you can see that we're getting the colors of our texture and it's unwrapped nicely, right? So stuff is happening. And well, we can just try and fix the, the way this looks just a little bit. So 
let's just rotate this. And I feel like there should always be some kind of rotation. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Perhaps Z90. And scale it a little bit down. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. So we can see a lot of layering going on, a lot of repetition. So what I'm going to do is Shift A, Vector Math set to Scale. And scale this down just, just enough so that we don't see a lot of repetition going on. There we go. All right. So this is looking like bark. A little bit of a plain material. So the same texture I'm going to be using for a bump map. Right, so drag that color out to a color ramp. That's not the right one. Color ramp, the regular one. And I want this to connect to my normal map. Shift A, bump, drag that in between and connect this to the height instead. And just reduce the strength so it's not overkill. Right, so you have a little bit of a bump map, but not too strong. Something like that. Great, so beautiful. So I'm going to Ctrl Shift D that color ramp and connect that up to the roughness as well there. Right. So I don't want it to be completely glossy at any point. So I'm not going to grab this and set it to be a little bit light grayish like that. That is looking quite decent. All right. So let's re-enable our leaves as well while we're at it. Reconnect that in the join there. And that is how we create a plant. Right, it actually has the right materials, it has leaves, it has everything a plant needs to have, right? Draw new ones, change its settings, and all that's left is to just connect up our input geometry, pretty much, right? So we have our random seed, rotation alignment, and for those starting branches, right? You can make them point more up, more down, right? Very procedural, quite nice. Um, so this is for the first one. If I go to my group, we can rotation alignment, um sub branch there we go this count is gonna be sub range density there we go beautiful then i would connect uh, this up for sure because that is going to be our sub branch radius radius hello i did not type that right radius and that's going to be controlling our sub branch radius, as you can see. Oh, that's the main branch, actually. Ah, yes, of course it is. <laughs> um, so just name it radius. Yes, there we go. Then we all want this to connect as well, right? So shift A, group input. So this is going to be our, um, just name this branch density. There we go. Now this is branch length, branch what is this called? My skill, my strength, gravity, very important, branch radius, spline dependency, everything can be connected. And I'm just going to name all this sub. And this one as well, sub, everything sub. This is a little bit of boring work, but it is very handy in case you want to tweak some stuff later. The branch. And then the spline dependency, I guess, we don't really need. So I'm going to disconnect that there. Okay, so the same thing we can do for the third one, right? So shift A, group input. There we go. And we can connect the same exact stuff once again, right? So I want a random seed for my third branches. I want, what's the fixer we're doing again? I think it's the, um, the pointing direction, right? It is the <coughs> rotation of the branch. So connect that up there. And the density... For sure, length, everything, we want it all. We want as much control as we can, right? And this is all going to be third. I'm just going to call that third. Um, this one as well. Third. Uh, this one, third. Third. <laughs> third. Right, and you can make as many branches as you want, really. Just make sure to control them all separately if you'd like that. This is going to be the third branch rotation alignment. There we go. Um, and when you have the naming fixed, you can collapse this. Collapse it like that. Beautiful. Hide your leaf. Doesn't matter anymore. And you can now control your entire plant with your own values, right? Beautiful. 
because we all set this up. We can name this to be plant gen, plant gen. And now we can control all of these values exactly how we like it, right? So let's play around with that for a little bit. Density, seed, seed is a lot of fun to play around with. We'll create a lot of different, different looks. Rotation alignment I like a lot as well, right? We can just have them all hanging a little bit or we can just, um, just align them all more to the Z direction, which will make a little bit more of a clumped type of leaf system as well. Um, then of course we have our length of those leaves, right? We can stick this out, it's gonna, gonna get more, more random, more bush type, right? So if we now increase that density, it's more of a bush rather than a plant, right? Especially if we now crank down our rotation alignment, it is now more bush again, right? And that is just very fun to deal with. Now, even this gravity, right? You can just make this um, stand on top of a pillar, for example, right? So we shift a mesh plane, um, extrude that a little bit, right? See, this is like a little pillar where a plant is standing on. And now you can just decrease that gravity value like that. And you can make it drip down a little bit, right? Decrease the length a little bit. There we go. It is now just dripping down a bit more, right? So I think there's a, a lot a lot possible with this initial setup already. And it's the, well, the real strength of using geometry grenades for stuff like this, right? And then we even have the control for the third branches, right? So the seeds change everything, the alignment as well will change a lot of the look too, of those endpoints especially. The density of the third branches, right? Add more leaves or less leaves, you can make it very thick, like an actual, um, like an actual bush, I guess, or even a little tree, doesn't matter. You can crank this up and just crank up your, your branch radius to be thicker. You can see it's more like a, gonna be more like a tree, I guess. Um, so yeah. It's a lot of options. Third branch length is going to be a very interesting one too. All right, you can see changes a lot of the look of the tree or the plant, whatever. Noise scale as well, right? We didn't even touch this for the first one yet. So the noise scale, if we up that strength, our bush is getting more random and random. And third branch gravity, a lot of fun as well, right? We can make this go straight up. You got some, some trees that actually do this. What is it, like a willow tree? I'm not sure, but there's there is trees that do this, and then just crank up your your little bit of a density there, and you got a little willow type of tree, I guess. And the gravity can also go down, right? There's also leaves that do uh, trees that do that, I think. So you yeah, know, you got all the control. Um, I like doing uh, this work a lot, making procedural stuff. Now, if I would ever need a, another plant, I would just use this customize it myself and um, you change the um the leaf texture once in a while or change the color right we can just select our leaf and go to the shader of that leaf and actually just add a human saturation value in between there shift a hue saturation value and we can actually just change the hue right make it blue or make it more dead right make it a bit more of a that type of leaf or a fall leaf, quite beautiful, right? So there's a lot of stuff you can do. So that was it, right? And now you know how to create your own little procedural plant tree generator, right? You can make this any shape you'd like, make it higher. You can even use this for trees, I now realize, which is quite fun, right? Add more branches, now it's a tree, right? Isn't that interesting? Um, <laughs> I could play around with this stuff all day. All right, so thank you for watching. Um, if you like this, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. It will make me incredibly happy. I love reading comments. And then I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and cheers.